dragon, and I am here to conquest! Hey, it's me, Kazuki Takahashi. I brought Eric from Legal. We're just here to explain some things. Uh, so, um... You're not a dragon. Why not? Uh, I can take it from here, sir. Uh, so basically we made a little bit of an oopsie and there's too much generic dragon support. So uh, we are reclassifying you as a worm. I mean, you don't exactly have arms, do you? Well, no, I don't. Okay, great. Well, enjoy Waterfall of Dragon Souls and you can go hang out over there with the Yang Zings. Good afternoon, jank enthusiasts. I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. Today, I posit a question. What is a worm? When I say the word worm, and that's W-Y-R-M, what image springs to mind? Is it a generic dragon, like Baxia? Is it a legless dragon, like Adhara? Or is it a seahorse, like Mare Mare? Whatever the case, it's time to look at the fourth archetype released ever with this miserable not-dragon typing, Tenyi. Before we begin, if you're on the fence about subscribing, let me sweeten the pot for you. Click that little button below the video and I'll use my Rothschildian connections to Errata Jet Synchron to lose you the game on Normal Summon. So here's the list and, ah, vanity's fiend. No plays, head empty. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is an online strategy site for our mutual favorite card game. It's got a deck builder, card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the Quarantine Series deck breakdowns, so give it a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. Now let's tangle with Tenyi. Tenyi is an archetype of worm-type monsters, which usually signals that the design team is all out of ideas, but the balance team is howling endlessly about how dangerous it would be to make another dragon archetype. Each has two effects, one to special summon themselves from the hand provided all you control as non-effect monsters, and one that can be activated by banishing itself from your hand or graveyard. They've got a tribal link monster with no text, a significant amount of setups featuring Mare Mare, and a newly released boss monster in Duov who gives them game against some of the strongest decks in the format. They also sport an extremely low price tag, so if you're looking to steal games without investing too much money into a metagame you can't play, they are a fantastic choice. But why are we tinkering with Tenyi all of a sudden? Well, after a startling finish by Lil Shpi that could in the fifth Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine series, including an on-screen Eldritch Slaughter, and the promise of new support released in OCG this April, it might be time to start thinking of Tenyi as a competent archetype and not an extender for Ad Emancipator. Nearly every open in this list is capable of making Berserker plus Saha, and Hyrule hands include extra effectless monsters for protection or an onboard vanities. Once Saha is on field, it is extremely difficult to remove and generates monsters every turn, which is usually enough to steal the match. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, our Tenyi. We're on 3 Ashana, which represents 2 materials, 3 Vishutta, which bounces, 3 Sathana, which reborns when your non-effect monster is destroyed, 3 Adhara, which returns a banished Tenyi the next turn, 2 Nahata and 2 Mapura, their battle and targeting protection respectively. We just need different names, hence the sum of the time ratios. Finally, we're on 3 Mare Mare, as it's just as good in the hand as it is in the graveyard, and 3 Vanities, since we don't use our normal. We're on Valor as our hand trap of choice for access code plays, as well as something that will always be live off of Flawless. For spells, we're on 3 Vessel, 3 Dragon Cycle, 1 of its usual search target, Flawless Perfection, 2 Foolish Burial Goods, 3 Avarice to Recycle Monk, 2 Desires, and a Foolish. In the extra, we're on Draco and Baxia, Sasaraha... God, I'm trying. Two Berserker, Masters, Shaman, Monk, and then four cards that come up extremely infrequently and can very much be shaved in the interest of budget, Access Code, Selene, Halk, and Mascarena. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against, well, to the untrained plebeian eye, it might appear as if our opponent is playing Mech Knight, but to a Genois such as myself, I can tell at a glance, they're on Scars Turbo. Be prepared to note its level in the comments section. We'll lead with the blue, which we will use to special summon a copy of Monk, we'll activate Dragon Cycle for an Ashana, we'll make another Monk, and then activate Vessel in order to send a Mare Mare to the graveyard. We'll use Ashana for a green, which will turn into a Monk, and then special a red from our hand. We'll go into a Shaman and activate Shaman's effect to bring back Mare Mare, and activate its effect thrice per turn. Afterwards, we're going to get back this copy of Ashana from our banished zone, 
and then links up in a copy of Berserker and a copy of Sahar. This is a pretty good turn one setup. Our opponent's going to draw for turn, they're going to set one card, and then special summon a copy of purple. Unfortunately, to activate purple's effect, you have to target. That's impossible when Sahar and a non-effect monster are on the field. We'll make a couple of tokens, then activate Cycle. That searches us a copy of Flawless Perfection. We'll tribute summon a Vanity's Fiend and get in for 500, 3000, 25, and lethal. Our second match is up against Trap Tricks, and what this game aims to showcase is that while this deck is extremely capable of beating both meta and off-meta strategies, it tends to struggle versus Rogue. Our opponent's going first. They're going to normal summon a copy of Mirror Mellow and activate its effect to get a copy of Floodgate to hand. They'll link summon a Sarah and then special summon two parallel exceeds, one from hand and one from deck. They'll activate Shade Brigantine, which will trigger the Sarah, getting Mirror Mellow. Its effect is mandatory, so it will trigger even though I have no spells and traps. They'll go into a Rafflesia and Abyss Dweller, set two, and pass. This is quite bad. We're going to go ahead and attempt to fire an Ashana that'll be met with a Rafflesia sending a Grave Hole that deals 2,000 damage to us. They're going to trigger Sarah afterwards for another Floodgate. We'll make Vishutta, which eats one Floodgate and triggers a Sarah, triggering Mermelo in the process. We'll normal summon a Mapura, and now we're forced to pass. Our opponent is going to draw a copy of Thunderbird for turn, and they hit it one of the very few times when that's actually good. Next, they'll activate Choop, bringing back Thunderbird, and proceed to battle. We're taking a fair amount of damage here, but notably, we are not dead. Technically, we could come back, but that Rafflesio with one material is quite threatening. We'll activate this copy of Ashana again. It will unfortunately be met with the Rafflesia another time, sending a Grave Hole and burning us for lethal. So, it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Eldritch, let's see if we can replicate Lil Shpi's success. They're gonna leave with a copy of Tuning, and oh, what an unfortunate mill, that Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion triggering way too early. They'll go into a Jet Synchron and then activate its Graveyard effect, afterwards they'll make Halka Fibrax, getting the other O-Lion from hand. They'll use Link Cross's effect, getting two material to their side of the board, so they can Synchro Summon a copy of Martial Metal Marcher, enabling the Synchro Summon of a TG Hyper Librarian. They're gonna go into Savage Dragon, and then trigger the effect of Link Rebo in the Graveyard to enable a Barricade Borg Blocker. They're gonna set a copy of Conquistador, and pass it back to us. This is a very beatable board. We draw a Mare Mare for turn. We're going to special summon a blue to go into Monk. We'll activate Vessel. That fiends the negate out of the Boar Load. That's fantastic because we can chain Dragon Cycle. We're going to go into Ashana. We'll use Ashana's effect in the graveyard after Link Summoning to get a copy of Vishutta from deck, which will turn into a Monk and a Vishutta effect, bouncing what we know is the Conquistador. We'll go into Shaman and activate its effect in order to get back this Mare Mare and activate its effect thrice per turn. From this position, we should be good. We're going to activate Sahar's effect, targeting our opponent's copy of Boar Load and then Pot of Avarice, putting all these monks back in the extra. Great work! We'll draw a couple of cards, one of which is Vessel, the first was negated, so we'll go for it again before going into Shaman, whose effect we can trigger to destroy this copy of Borload and save us a lot of hassle. Unfortunately for us, ugh, our zone management is just a little bit off, and as a result we can't go into the 10 Yi Link 1 and get in for lethal. 100 life points is still not very many. Our opponent's going to set their hand, we'll activate Dragon Cycle to get a copy of Hara from deck, and then for turn we'll draw, ooh, a Foolish Burial, don't mind if I do. We'll activate Dragon Cycle again, and then go for Flawless Perfection. Our opponent will chain the effect of Link Rebo, so we don't draw a bunch of cards. We'll activate Shaman to bring back Blue and go into Access Code Talker, because it's funny, I suppose. We'll target the Link Rebo, and then afterwards we'll proceed to Battle Phase. We'll attack the Link, crash, attack. They chain Conquistador, but unfortunately can't stop the Access Code. So, it's time for Game 2, and oh! Tuning in the opener once again! What are the chances? Well, this time they don't have a bunch of Garnets in the opening hand, so this could be quite bad for us. They're going to lead with a copy of Tuning, getting a Jet Synchron to hand. They'll normal summon this Jet Synchron and go into Link Rebo, activating its Grave Effect to enable the Link Summon of the Halk of Fibrax. We'll Vader the Halk, they'll set two, and this is a very winnable game from our perspective. They'll activate Sanguine immediately, telegraphing a Golden Land, okay. We'll go into a Shunna to go into a Monk, they'll activate Conquistador, destroying our Monk. Okay, we still have Vishutta, we'll go into a Monk and then activate a Shunna to get a copy of Adhara. We'll go into another Monk before activating Vishutta to bounce this copy of Conquistador and Foolish Burialing away a copy of Mare Mare. We're gonna go into Shaman, activate its effect, and... Valor. Okay, fine. Well, maybe we'll draw something crazy off of this Pot of Avarice. We're going to shuffle a bunch of cards back, and no, unfortunately, we did not. We'll link summon a copy of Berserker and attack over this copy of Eldritch, but that is going to have to be enough. Our opponent's going to draw an Infinite Impermanence for turn. They're going to go into a Scarlet Sanguine, into Hakketo. They're going to get Eldritch from their graveyard back to the field and forget about Nahatha. Okay, well, we get a free turn off of this. We still have a Berserker. We might be able to do it. Well, we'll activate Ashana first, we'll go into Sathana, they're going to activate Halka Fibrax for Formula Synchron, and then activate Eldixir of Scarlet Sanguine, telegraphing another Golden Land Trap. We'll go into Monk, we'll activate Adhara's Effect to go into Sathahara. That triggers our opponent's Conquistador, but this is all according to plan. We still have the material on board to do what we want, which is Special Ashana, and make Shaman! We'll activate Shaman, targeting Mare Mare! And the set card 
is infinite impermanence. Okay, well, we can make Draco Masters and, I guess, walk over the formula Synchron. Our opponent's going to go into another Hop of Ibrax. We do have an Effect Veiler, but it's too little too late. With one Trap in hand, they can special this Eldritch and walk over our monster for 900 damage. Now, of course, it can't be destroyed by battle with an Effect Monster, but it can certainly be destroyed by Access Code's Effect. In Main Phase 2, they're going to set a copy of Conquistador and trigger both Haketo and Conquistador for a Scarlet Sanguine and probably a White Destiny as well. We have to draw something crazy... Well, that's not a bad one. We'll go ahead and special summon this copy of Idhara from hand, but unfortunately our opponent jumps the gun and conks us immediately. So it's time for that all-important Game 3 and... <laughs> oh my god. Well, if we can't beat this open from our opponent, I don't know what to tell you about this deck. We're going to lead with a copy of Ashana. Next, we're going to link summon a copy of Monk of the Tenyi. We'll activate Vessel for the Dragon Cycle. We're going to activate Ashana's effect, which prompts an Ash Blossom from our opponent. No big deal. We'll go into Adhara. We'll activate Pot of Desires, drawing a couple of cards off the top of our deck. And, ooh, Vanity's Fiend. We'll activate Shaman. That eats an effect, Veiler. And I don't really want to tribute summon Vanity's Pass against the Eldritch deck. So instead, we're going to activate Adhara and then go into this copy of Berserker, setting up the requisite material in Graveyard for a Pot of Avarice and ending the turn with Protection in Graveyard. It doesn't look very assuming, but it's fine. Our opponent's going to T-Set. I'm feeling great. From this position, we can just special summon this copy of Ashana, go into a Monk of the Tenyi, activate Ashana's effect for blue. Next, we'll link summon a copy of Shaman. We'll use its effect to bring back Mare Mare and activate its effect thrice per turn. That's three tokens to our side of the field, and from here, we can link summon our mighty Link 4 before tribute summoning a Vanity's Fiend, and this is lethal, right? I haven't counted. This is... This is definitely lethal, correct? This is 100% lethal. Oh my gosh, I missed it again. We even have Monk in the extra deck! Okay, fine. Our opponent's going to set one and pass. We still should be able to win from this position. We're going to go to battle phase and trigger the effect of Shaman once again, destroying our opponent's set monster before getting in with tokens and vanities. So, we're back with the deck, and you know my litmus test. If it can take down Eldritch even while missing lethal, it deserves special consideration. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, it's not just consistent. It is extremely consistent. You really only need to find a couple of Tenyi monsters, and between Vessel, Ashana, and Shaman, even worst case hands can land on the Link 4. Two, it's a real hassle to interact with. Saha's ability to constantly produce tokens and shut off all targeting interaction is amazing, and if you're able to search Flawless Perfection, it becomes even more powerful. And three, it's another deck made possible by the unlimiting of Pot of Avarice. Zoo, Striker, all of these decks excel at dumping the entire ED into the graveyard, and this one's weakness of running out of monks is now a thing of the past. And the cons. One, all of its interaction is on board. You're not really keeping anything up your sleeve with this deck. Realistically, anything you add to your hand for protection will either be telegraphed or in the graveyard. There's a lot to manage, and it's not unreasonable to assume your opponent will screw it up, but you basically have to rely on them doing so. Two, it's got some unfortunate nombos. Vanity's lines tend to turn off your board as well. If your Link 4 lives, you can't special 10 use the next turn. I mean, they're not unplayably bad, and they usually hurt your opponent worse than they hurt you, but there's something to consider. And three... It's very much a meta call. A good Eldlich matchup is basically the only reason to play this deck right now, and it's very possible once Eldlich dips in playability, it won't be good anymore. All in all, this is a cheap, fun deck, and I hope its impressive showing in the YCS was more than a fluke. After all, we deserve a good worm archetype after... Metaphys. So that's that. Thanks to my patrons, MeepMoto27, Tamamo Bay, Alex Perea, Austin Lyles, Candyman, Crispy, Mika Reichman, Sir Tachyon, Tyler Slacks, Tyrese Biggums IV, Andrew Horseman Linderman, Austin Zell, Chad Bortz, Presley Case in the Fourth, Moira Brown, Angry Bread, Lucky Number Five, Amid Alafandi, Nick Extreme Ninety Nine, Miyuna Arashi, Jason Leonard, Andrew Boyko, Don Coro, Nick Dolores, Marty Caldwell, Make Fetzo, Blue Boy, Shane Meadow Edits, Pronga, David Daniels, Red Eyes, Shadow Fusion, Josh, CJ Alex, Stevie Blunder, Darcy Tevs, Mitchell Cook, Sam Soon, Kurakaze, Chorps Away, Haruf, Jane Linya, Stojan is Trubbish, Lucas Hansen, Algis, Marcin Cavitius, Lavender Lemonade, Zach McKee, Gustavo Sicon, Sabirin Rabbit, Pro FP Two, Gamer Games, Michael Oskvark, Dan the Man Hoban, Blab, Blake Root, Standards Objective, Jeff Leonard, Ember Stove. TJ Steakhouse, Dominic Ernst, Pro Yugi Dad, Picnic Blastit, Lawrence, Gel, Du Rado, Ernesto Ibarra, Fighting Fang Wong, Donnie Fillerup, Adam Sundquist, Isaac Jackson, Second Lucas Yerdes, Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, and Distrin. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. If you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.